Hello and welcome! I'm Enigmius. This is episode 27 of the Ultimate Feed the Beast Reloaded. Today, we're continuing with the Mega Creeper build. Picking up where we left off in the last episode, finishing off the Inchworm Drive modules. 15 Inchworm Drive modules spread out before you in the wasteland. It's actually going together really, really well. I don't know that I've ever been this comfortable putting together the three-axis inchworm drive, partly because I haven't ever actually sat down and tried to figure out my own sort of design for it. I've always kind of looked at what other people were doing and tried to duplicate it with my own spin on it, which kind of makes it a bit of a mess. It's a lot easier when I can sort of put it together on my own from scratch with just an understanding of how they work. So that's what I've got here is a nice compact, easy to visualize, easy to assemble, three-axis module. A little bit time-consuming to do 15 of them at a time, but we're actually going to be doing a number more. I've determined at least nine more. Actually, um, nine more will be the absolute bare minimum that will leave our creeper without a head. So... <laughs> I just have to make the diamond draw plates. Not my favorite thing to do. I've learned that you can use one diamond draw plate to turn four stacks of copper into fine wire before it breaks. Which is not, uh, not as much as I might like when we're doing a build of this size. 180 frame motors, 120 wireless receivers, I think we're coming up on 20 stacks of frames. Actually, I think we're over 20 stacks of frames now because I brought 18 stacks with me just to do the added structural elements, not counting what's already on the engine modules. So it's it's not a small build, but nothing particularly expensive, really. About the most expensive, depending on how you look at it, is the frame motors because of the diamond draw plates. If a person is having difficulty coming up with ender pearls, then I can see how the wireless receivers might be an issue. But as you saw in the last episode, I'm not having any difficulties coming up with ender pearls, so that's not really that big of a deal. I did have to make a, a farming run into the nether for glowstone, but that's, that's about it. So you can see now we're doing a test. It's like my own little army marching in lockstep, going around, doing what it needs to do, making sure everything works. The horizontal movement is exactly where we want it to be, a little bit of vertical movement, and finish it off by pushing it up a couple of blocks higher than it was so that I don't have to be so concerned about setting off creeper explosions when my feet dangle in their faces while I'm working on the undercarriage of each module, which is what I'm about to start on, where we're going to start putting the structural elements in place. Now obviously we weren't going to just leave it as a giant collection of inchworm drive modules. We have to make it look like something, so... Being that this is mostly a fun build, I don't have to worry too too much about tube frames or anything like that. Um, if I do end up in that position where I'm worrying about it at all, that will be on a small scale. The kind of thing where it's easy enough to come back later and swap out a regular support frame for a tube frame if I had to. But for the time being, I'm mostly just wanting to get a uniform sort of system in place to get all of these motors equipped with the appropriate undercarriage so that we can build on them from there. And this is where we start using up a lot of frames. But it's not that bad. I mean, as builds go, this is where it's just sort of... It's like building something out of regular building materials. It's not really a thought demanding process it's mostly just time so <laughs> fortunately we have the time lapse and before it's all said and done all of these guys will have the necessary elements in place they'll start looking like something that's basically my one promise to you is by the end of this episode things will start looking like something other than an army of inchworm drives. Now you can see I'm putting in some vertical stuff as well. Basically these will be, I can't say cubes, because, you know, a cube is a square kind of thing, and these are going to be a little bit more rectangular in certain areas. But it's, you get the idea. They're going to be in boxes, so to speak, and the boxes are going to be covered by covers, 
so that I don't have to worry about the modules fusing to one another as they move around. And also, you know, we can get all kinds of different covers on it to make it look hopefully a little bit more interesting than just naked frames. Because naked frames are only interesting if you want it to look like naked frames. And we want this to look like a creeper. And even still, I'm not sure if we're going to go for the pure kind of creeper look or if we're going to switch it up a little bit. I think we're going to be switching it up just because um, no matter what I do, I know there are going to be some sheep who are very, very unhappy with me by the time this build is done. And that's just sort of the price they have to pay for eating all of my grass, the bastards. So now I'm going around and making a few tweaks. But basically, these elements are done, and then it's just a matter of kind of making sure that I've done all of them in the same way, making sure that all of them are sort of where I expected them to be in terms of I haven't accidentally moved one the wrong way or something like that, because the last thing I want is a collision right now fusing any of these guys together, because that would just be absolutely horrible. And also, one of the things that I learned with the previous Creeper build is that you can actually save a ton of frames by skipping frames where you don't need to have frames, and we'll talk about that more when we start putting the covers on, but now we're actually starting to assemble the Creeper, so to speak. Now, I'm leaving gaps in between each module, not only so that they don't fuse together, but also so that I have room to work as we're finishing it off, because I don't like to force myself into a position where things are really, really cramped and borderline claustrophobic. So we're just kind of stacking everything together. One of the things that didn't hit me until the last few modules is that I'm doing all of these individually, stacking them up, moving them around, whereas if I had have just put a little bit of thought ahead of time into it, I could have saved myself a lot of time by moving them in batches. Now we're assembling the legs here. The legs of our creeper are going together. And I'm not sure if it's going to be clear to you exactly how that's going to work yet, but it will by the end of the episode. You should have a pretty good idea of how that's going to happen. And one of the things that I took into account as well is these are going to be 9x9 nine nine and 6 blocks high, each of these modules. And that leaves me enough room around the outside edges of the engine modules so that I can put other things without having to worry too much about being too cramped for space. So as far as the bottom of the the modules go, they're basically done. They're ready for covers whenever I get around to putting covers on them, but obviously the sides and the top still need a little bit of work. So between now and the next episode, I'll kind of figure out exactly what I want to put in the modules. Some of them might get something, some of them will probably get nothing. And then we can look at buttoning them up and putting covers on them so that they look a little bit more refined than the way they currently look. But you can see now we've got three high and that's about as high as we're gonna go for each leg. The torso can be a lot bigger. <laughs> that's where we're gonna need all the extra modules is the torso. I had originally planned on doing it into pieces that's changed. So mostly, even though I kind of, like I say, I botched it and I took a lot more time than I had to to get this done, I'm just having fun moving something because you may have noticed, with the exception of that one module that we tested in the last episode where I forgot the jacketed blue wire, this is the very first frame project I've ever done where everything moves as it's supposed to on the first attempt, which is just mind-boggling. I guess I was due. I guess... For the number that I've done, it's about time that I finally got it right on the first try instead of messing around for an hour after the first attempt just trying to figure out what's wrong before I can even think about trying to figure out how to fix it. So with this view, you can sort of get a slightly better idea of where we're going with this. And once the time lapse is done, then we'll definitely be able to take a closer look from a better vantage point. This is mostly about watching them move and go into place which is really not too bad of a process. It helps for me as well to see it like this because I have to kind of gauge exactly what I can expect out of the motors in terms of how fast they move for later on when I'm deciding what to actually do with the creeper because most of it's going to be for the benefit of the cameraman. Now this is where I actually finally got a brain and said, hey, wait a second, why don't I just do these in batches and just 
move them individually where I have to to align them properly and then once I've got them aligned here then I can move as you see here three at a time into place much much quicker and easier than trying to move each individually and so far I mean the cameraman has just been misbehaving in general lately but it looks not too bad for the flicker given the number of frames that we're moving it's actually fairly reasonable I've done frame vehicles and frame structures in the past where you move and you sit there and half the, st the structure just disappears for like two or three seconds. So, so far, so good. So this is one of those few times where I'm actually happy that night came, nighttime came around. Uh, because all of the creepers came out to play and we can just kind of take a look at them closely and then compare it to what we've got going on here. And it should help make things a little bit more clear. Now I just turned my night vision on and we'll kind of zoom in on this guy. You can see just by looking at him that <laughs> apparently he needed a hug. They're, they're not complicated structurally so to speak. They've got their four legs which from the front or the back just look like one very wide leg. They've got the torso which is about the same depth as each leg and maybe twice the height of a leg if you kind of compare them side by side sort of thing and then you've got the head which is a little bit taller than a leg and about twice the width of a torso or a leg so I mean they're not, they're not really particularly difficult to duplicate and you can see over here we've got a leg and then we've got the beginnings of the torso and we've got a leg is where we're going with this now because these guys are exposed frames I don't want to be squishing them together to give you a proper look at how things will be once it's all done but you can imagine getting rid of this gap between the legs here and also this gap between the modules will be gone so the legs won't be so tall as they appear right here because that will be ludicrous and the same with the torso the torso is actually being built in two halves so that we can actually treat them as two distinct sort of imagine like two sticks and when you want to make it turn you move one to the you know you <clears throat> try that again you move one forward one back and then you bring them both towards the middle and then all of a sudden it looks like it's turned even though you're looking at different faces on the uh this the um rectangles as it were so if you're having trouble visualizing don't worry It'll make a lot more sense when we actually do it with the finished project, but that's the whole idea. Same with the legs. When I want the vehicle, as it were, to look like it's turning to move in a different direction, we could move these front sets of legs forward and together, and the back sets of legs away and together, and they would look just like they do now, only from this side. And that's the whole idea that we're going for here, is having the option to make it look the way it's supposed to look, no matter what direction it's facing. And also, it, enough individual modules so that it can articulate, for example, the leg movement. I, I, I didn't want the thing to just kind of slide along the ground without moving the legs in any way. But by having them in three different modules, you can sort of extend them out in sort of a stepping pattern to make it look like it's sliding forward or back for each leg and same this way so this is definitely you can see now also why we're going to be using computer controls for this because there's no way you would be able to manage this with buttons and levers unless you had something about this size full of red power circuitry for everything that you wanted to do so it's coming together fairly fairly quickly actually because I've kept it as simple as I possibly can. Now like I say we haven't added anything to it beyond just the motor units and some basic structure. There will be some other things added to it and I just kind of have to decide exactly what it's going to be and exactly where I'm going to put it. But I think it's going to work out pretty good. So the next episode I want to get the rest of the torso modules in place and we can start looking at some of the aesthetic covering details so that it starts to look more and more each episode like a giant creeper 
And then before you know it, we'll be watching our giant creeper stomping around the wastelands, chasing ghasts, and uh, apparently it's a cold day in hell because it's snow. We've got all kinds of crazy stuff that we can do, and it's just a matter of getting the, the framework into place upon which to build it all. So I hope you're enjoying the build so far. Leave your comments below if you want to be notified when I add the next episode. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, maybe you want to subscribe so you'll be notified when I add the next video. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.